Okay, this is a video on how to not fix a Sears variable plug-in timer. That is how not to and also how to. Like not doing the not part. This is a, if you can focus on this, I don't know if it will, but it's got the uh, model number. Okay, 796664. Sears 24 hour variable plug in timer. Okay, that seems to focus. That seems a little better. Okay, now I was talking with my sister who was going to be going on vacation. She said she had some of these variable plug in timers, but she threw them out because they weren't working. And she got some. Alexa plugs. So I remembered that I had some of these lying around and I took this one and I plugged it in and it wasn't working. So then I said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I can fix this. So, well, getting the back cover off is easy enough. It's kind of obvious. There are three screws. Okay. Now, what I've shown you right here is when I've also taken the cover off to the motor and gear compartment, but before I got around to doing that, I more or less tried to do a complete disassembly, which is to remove the other screws to see if I could pop this thing out. I tried prying on the front wheel to see if that would pop off so that, that I could take this out. The idea being that just by looking at it, I might observe what was wrong with it. Well, I couldn't pry this thing on the front, and, and I've learned over the years not to try overly hard when something's not working, because you'll probably break it. Now, when you're fixing something that doesn't work, you can get in the habit of saying, well, if I break it, I haven't lost anything. But then after you go ahead and break it, usually you feel kind of bad about it, because you realize that you were really just kind of going overboard. Now. And that's kind of what happened on this one. So let me explain. I, I couldn't get it out. I couldn't pry the thing off the front. And then I said, well, let me try a different strategy. I'll try prying off this back case and then seeing what I can see. The back case does come off because it's got these little tabs that are holding it in. And you can thread those tabs or move them in a certain direction to provide a little bit of... Uh, clearance on the case and then the case you can pry off. I did have to use a knife blade, a sharp knife blade like a jackknife to pry it out but it did come up and then I was looking at this. Now this I said oh okay this is almost certainly a motor and then gears. The gears reduced down to produce the 24-hour spin and I said well, okay Probably what's happened is there's corrosion somewhere. And um, it's like a watch that stops. It needs to be cleaned. If I can get the corrosion out, or corrosion might just be dried up oil. If it was lubricated with oil. If it wasn't, it could have been essentially rust starting to form on metal parts. Who knows? Something that hasn't been used in 20, 10, 20, 30 years. This I pulled out of my parents' house. So it's been a long time since it was used, and it didn't surprise me that it wasn't running. Now, here's the first mistake I made. I tried forcing this gear to turn because I figured, well, I certainly can't really get a good grip on this other one because it's much smaller. This one I can get a good grip on. And maybe if I just wiggle it back and forth, I can free up the mechanism. Well, I did free up the mechanism, but what I ended up doing, let me show you. Okay, let me see if it'll focus. The focus on this camera's not so bad, but... What it did do is, it broke off two of the teeth on the small wheel. Now, if you've worked on things with plastic gears, 
you'll probably have run into this type of problem. The plastic gears can crack. Here is an example of overdoing it. I simply overdid this. And there were two teeth engaged at any one time. And what happened was, as I forced this for some movement, I ended up breaking off two of them. Now, after I did that, I said, well, okay, this is probably toast. I then later discovered that this I could actually take out. Having taken it out, I then set to mind to seeing if I could get this to rotate. Now, now it's rotating rather easily, but at the time it wasn't. And I had to kind of apply some force to it, which I did, and I got it to rotate. And then I concluded, okay, maybe that was the only problem, that there was some type of uh, corrosion and it was locked up somewhere on the axis of this uh, spindle. Now, and then I said to myself, if I can get those two teeth back on, maybe I can get it working. Well, as luck would have it, one of the teeth, and it broke off, actually landed on the table. And it was, of course, very small, but I could see it it's lying on the table. It was this one to the right, right there. And I said, maybe I can glue that back on. Uh, I said to myself, this will probably almost certainly not work because if I broke it off and I'm trying to glue on this piece where there's gonna be force applied to it, it'll probably just break off again. But here's where I had nothing to lose. So it took some, let me get my, um, this back to the 1X. Okay. I use JB Weld plastic because this is a plastic gear. And I, I smothered that site with the plastic epoxy. Then I said, how am I going to get that little plastic tooth? back into position. I certainly can't use my fingers. I'd like to use a very fine set of tweezers. Well, I couldn't find the tweezers that I wanted to. I do have a pair of tweezers with a very sharp point. What I did try was, I just took this pick and I just touched against the little plaque piece. And for some reason that I don't really know, it might have been static electricity. It stuck to it. And then I went to put it into the position of where it would go. It was either one of the two missing teeth. I tried one of the teeth and it didn't stick because uh, it wouldn't fit in properly. So then I moved to the other one. Almost miraculously, it just stuck right in place. So I said, well, okay, maybe I dodged a bullet. I let that one dry for 24 hours. I looked around, could not find the other missing tooth. So then I said, well, maybe what I can do is take JB Weld, this type, two-part epoxy, high strength, and I'll just mix up a little dab of it. And I'll take the dab and I'll just use it to fill in the space where the um, missing gear is, okay? It's the one that's now, you can see, it's dark gray. I, what I did was, I just put a drop of it into that space with, between where the missing one would be. Then I took a toothpick and I just ran it up and down where the groove would be on either side, leaving a mound of the epoxy in the position of where the missing tooth would be. I let that dry for 24 hours. Honestly, it didn't look that bad. So I said to myself, okay, maybe this thing's going to work. Or at least I can give it a shot. Okay, then I noticed, let me get this back to the 1X. Okay, then I noticed that in putting this back on, it would actually go on in more than one way. So I made the mistake of not photographing this as I took it off carefully. 
only wants to go on in a way that's going to make um, this thing work. But I didn't worry about that initially. The next thing I wanted to worry about was see if I could get this thing to spin. Now that I had freed it up and I had replaced the teeth, I said, well, maybe I will just plug it in and see if I can get this wheel to spin by itself. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to hit pause. Okay, here it is. I've plugged it in. It should be spinning, but it's not. Um, if I touch it or fiddle with it. Okay, I got it there spinning now. Um, but it wouldn't do it unless I pushed it. In other words, it would not start up by itself. So I concluded that, well, it's probably got too much friction. Um, and, it, and even though I might have freed it up, it's not good enough for it to start all by itself. So then I made another mistake. Because when I looked at that, I assumed that that, would be, that gear would be spinning on the shaft and that the shaft would be spinning too and that the shaft would be part of the motor. So what I assumed was was that that shaft needed to turn. And I, I can't explain exactly how I was thinking at this point, but this is what I did. I, I actually was able to pull off the gear. Now, I'll hit pause and I'll pull it off. I'll show you. Well, with a pair of pliers, I was able to just basically pull this off. And I didn't realize at the time if this had been attached to that shaft, or should have been attached to that shaft, how is it that I could have pulled it off so easily? Well, I don't know. I wasn't thinking straight. Uh, I concluded, okay, it should have been attached to the shaft, but now it, I've broken it free. But my thought was, if I got the shaft turning, I could glue it back onto the shaft, and then everything would be okay. Okay, well, that almost doesn't make any sense. Uh, because I tried spinning the shaft all by itself and I could not get it to spin. And I might even be misremembering this a little bit. I tried to get this shaft to spin, thinking that it needed to. And I tried a lot of stuff. So one thing I tried was contact cleaner, electro contact cleaner. This is like some type of cleaning agent. I sprayed it on the shaft, thinking that it would work its way down shaft into the motor since it was electro cleaner it would eventually evaporate wouldn't cause a problem it would be a solvent the type of solvent that would evaporate and then i made the mistake now that was a mistake because that's not the kind of motor this was i then made the mistake of taking this pair of locking needle nose pliers grabbing onto the shaft and trying to turn it I did this over and over again. I could have easily destroyed the shaft, in fact. I might have. As far as I can tell, it seems fine, but I couldn't get it to spin. And now I'm not thinking straight, because I can't get it to spin at all, yet somehow I got the whole thing to spin, so maybe I actually popped this off before I got it spinning, but all I know is I tried to get that shaft to rotate before I, I couldn't. I gave up. And then it kind of was slowly dawning on me that that couldn't possibly have been the problem. And this thing must have been designed to spin on the shaft. Now, how could that be, I thought? This is just a plastic gear. But then it dawned on me that maybe this is actually a magnet, a permanent magnet, and that somehow all of these teeth are somehow engaging this magnetically as to create, as to allow it to spin. Um, well, yes, I, 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 I did kind of conclude that. And based on that, I did develop, um, well, let me show you. At, at the time that I, I didn't actually do these tests, but let me just show you what I could have done because this is a video of how not to and how to uh, destroy this thing.
Okay, I'll take it off again and show you some of the things that I now have tried to show that it is a magnet. Well, it's, it seems to, I got, it will pick up this needle. Okay. So, it's got a magnet, maybe a weak magnet, but it does seem to be a magnet. Okay, then there was another thing that I tried. I, I have this uh, compass pointing due north. And I concluded that it was the field of the mag of, of the compass, so it has a magnetic field. Um, now, it's not just metal. If it were metal and that needle was magnetized, which it shouldn't have been, but sometimes needles can get magnetized. Um, but this seemed to be an actual magnet, but. I assumed then that it might just be a simple north-south magnet somehow and that in the motor, because a, a motor with a permanent magnet, basically the, the coils set up an alternating north-south field and then the, the motor, the, the magnet tries to align with it, but it's cha constantly changing and it, as it's trying to catch up with the changing north-south magnetic field, it's spinning, okay? Then I decided to use these um, iron filings that I, that I had from a previous science kit. When I put a science kit together for study of magnetism, and I, I put the, um, the donut gear right underneath it. And what I detected was that the way the filings would line up was not like a north-south pattern. It was like there were a large number of little small magnets somehow lining up with those teeth. Well, I wouldn't necessarily need to know that, but it was kind of interesting. And I didn't do that at the time that I was trying to get this thing working, but I did it now. This helps me understand this and the operation of this. Now, another thing I noticed was that in trying to figure out which way this goes on, I didn't want to operate this thing in an incorrect manner so as to break it, okay? Here I'm just putting it on in one particular possible configuration, and I'm going to hit pause. Now, see, it's turning clockwise. What I had determined was that by looking at the stack of gears, how they were lined up to the front, finding out which was the last one that was on the axis of the front plate, I determined this actually needs to spin in a counterclockwise direction for this to work in the correct direction. I did not want it working in the incorrect direction. So, I just unplugged it, and what I discovered was that this metal bar, if I put it so that it's pointing to on this side, near this pin, it would rotate in the way it just did, which is clockwise. But if I put it over in the other direction, then it would rotate counterclockwise. So let's try that. Now you can see I just plugged it in, but it didn't spin. It requires a little bit of prompting. That's going counterclockwise. This is in the correct way. I didn't take a photograph, but I, I managed to recover from that because I did, was able to figure out which was the correct way to put it in, and it seemed as though it did not break in the meantime. Now, the problem with this is that it won't necessarily start up every single time. Um, if I, I can't do this with um, one hand, I don't think I can. Let me see if I can pull that plug out. Okay, I'm pulling out the start plug as if unplugging it from the wall by using the extension cord. And then when I put it back in, well, you know it doesn't work every single time because I just showed you that. 
But what I've noticed here is, is that if I let it run for five or 10 minutes, then I can put the plug in, in and out as many times as I want and it will continue to go. If I let it sit for a while, then it might stop. Now, not 100% sure why this is, but I might need to add some lubrication, I'm sorry, over on that spindle point, because that obviously if I can reduce the friction at that point, it might help it to start up. In fact, while I was messing with this, I had used oil at that spot. I've since cleaned the oil out because I realized that the oil is not a good thing to use because over time it tends to dry up and could make the problem 